Good evening, everybody. Glad to have y'all here this evening. We're going to start a couple of minutes early this evening. Uh, if we all will stand and sing with us, uh, page 518, The Longer I Serve Him, the scripture verse that is with this song this evening is, God, I serve my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his son. That's Romans chapter 1, verse 9.
So be in prayer for them. I did have some uh, good news from Jennifer Watkins. She was cleared by DHEC. Uh, she was uh, cleared from DHEC and she was uh, good to go. And uh, she would be healed for a certain amount of days, they said. And, and thankfully, Jennifer is going to uh, donate some plasma uh, to help people uh, get through this also. I mean, uh, if you get through it, you built up some antibodies, it'd be good to uh, donate some plasma because then you would help other people. I know two people, a couple that I read about in the news, uh, that helped donate plasma, helped 65 to 67 people with COVID. Uh, so it definitely uh, pays to help uh, one another. So be in prayer for Roy and Gloria uh, Shaw. And of course, this is not a mandate, just as the president has it mandated across the whole country to wear a mask, but I, I would, as your pastor, just encourage you to do so. And, and my rule of thumb is this, if you don't like wearing a mask, stay at home. Uh, you know, so a lot of companies, a lot of businesses, uh, they're requiring you to do that. In Aiken County, New Elton, if you the businesses, uh, they're requiring you to do that. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, you can have it, and you're giving it to other people. It's not harming you much, but it will harm other people. And to me, I know there's a lot of politics involved with uh, numbers and counts and so forth, uh, but if you talk to Roy Shaw and Gloria today, they'll tell you it's real. It really is real. It's not, it's not a hoax. Uh, so I, I just uh, encourage you as your pastor uh, to, when you go out, maybe when you come to church, we have masks available uh, to wear them. Uh, you know, I know there's a discussion that says, well, uh, you know, if we can stay apart further enough that, you know, Maybe I won't get it. Uh, do you know the wind blows, right? Uh, airborne stuff happens a lot. Uh, so I just, I just, as your pastor, just uh, saying an extra precaution, precaution there because uh, we all definitely want to uh, uh, see each other. I heard of another uh, minister in the upstate has it, uh, and, and has been probably traveling around to other churches to speak as an interim pastor. So I'm just saying uh, we don't understand what we have. Until maybe we get the symptoms, but you could have it before the symptoms arrive. And you're just transmitting it to everyone. So be careful. Uh, take precaution. Uh, it is serious. And uh, we want to definitely be in prayer uh, for them. Uh, also in prayer for uh, Tommy Braswell and her report that his uh, back pain, of course, is getting worse. We do need to be in prayer for him. I left him a message and told him we would be in prayer for him uh, during this time. Uh, no, it's been a constant problem, and, and sometimes it just gets worse. And uh, we pray for healing, and uh, the doctors who work, hopefully, their healing power to the Lord uh, throughout his body. Um, I haven't heard back from the uh, test that Bobby has. Has anybody else heard back from that? I know we're praying for Ann Poston's uh, uh, husband. Uh, we're praying for him uh, for a healing. Anyone else have any additions to the prayer sheet tonight? The family of Clara Griggs passed away. Okay. Family of Clara Griggs? Griggs. Okay. <coughs> okay. Praying for comfort through the family there. So we do see Chip here on the list also. That we were continuing to pray for him. Undergoing probably multiple things at this time. Anyone else? All right. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer tonight, okay? Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, that we can come to you. Come to you because, God, you have all the answers. Lord, we can assume we know what to do. But without your help, without the victory that comes from you, without the healing, without the wisdom, God, we are nothing. And Lord, we come to you just humbly seeking your face because, God, you know better than us. Lord, I pray for your word tonight. And I thank you for the music already. And that we can just continue to be faithful unto you, God, in the midst of all that's going on. God, you've been faithful to the church. You've been Faithful to the members, those that are on this uh, sheet for healing, for June, for Tommy Braswell, for uh, Gloria and Roy, Lord, we're praying that your healing touch be upon them for 
Chip Poston, Lord, we continue to lift these up to you because, God, when the doctors don't have answers, Lord, maybe when the nurses don't have answers, God, we look to you that can heal them. We look to you, Heavenly Father, for maybe some pain management, maybe some therapy, whatever it takes, Lord. I pray that you would issue a response that would be acknowledged. And Lord, for Bunny and Steve Raper, we continue to pray for them because, Lord, uh, your hand is still there. I believe you're still working. And, Lord, I, I miss Bunny. She's been coming to church, Lord, but I know why, Lord. She doesn't want to give anybody anything else, and God, that's very responsible of her. And Heavenly Father, I pray for anyone at home that is not on this list that might be just watching them in online or here in the congregation that has an unknown request to you, God. I pray that their heart, as they're uh, saying it right now, God, that they would be lifted up to you, and God, you would answer in the time you see perfect in which you see fit. Heavenly Father, you are a glorious God that loves us, and you are a great Father to look after us. God, I pray continual wisdom for the finance committee, for the members as we seek your will, for the sanctuary renovation, Lord. We're praying for no debt. We're praying, God, that you would provide uh, through individuals, through others, and Lord, you will do that. Uh, we trust you. We're going to continue to trust you, and God, we want to do things your way. Heavenly Father, as the book of James says, if anyone lacks wisdom, he should ask and you would give it gratefully. Lord, we pray for wisdom. And we're so thankful, God, and so excited of what you're doing in the midst of a pandemic. God, what you're doing in the midst of the riots. God, what you're doing in the midst of an election. All these things seem to be crumbling down around the nation. And Lord, you have not been taken by surprise. And Lord, you will not be mocked. God, blessed be the holy name of you, Jesus Christ.
Lord, you have been faithful. You continue to do so. God, we pray as we open up your bread tonight, as we feast upon your word, Heavenly Father, in Psalms 18, Lord, that you would teach us to remember the victories you send our way. And God, you're not done with those victories. We're still breathing and we're still living, God. Now, there's many victories to be had. God, we give you glory for all our past spiritual victories. And God, we praise your name for the future ones, trusting in you for them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, well, two things I want to let the others know before we get into Psalms 18. I've been on, uh, talking with uh, John. I've been talking with Rex and, and thinking about the uh, church's uh, logo and how we're going to go about. Now, we put one on the uh, website uh, that just uh, right now we're, we're looking into those prototypes and so forth. And what I told John and I told Rex is we're going to take a trip down to, and of course, when we get our schedules together, we'll take a trip down to uh, uh, Phoenix, uh, down here at Printing in Augusta. And uh, I've already been in contact with them, just waiting to get back with me and schedule something and get all the schedules together. We're going to go down there and uh, try to come up with uh, uh, either one or two and at least two we'll have, either one from us and then one from them, and then come together and present them to the church to be voted upon. I do want you to know that I am taking this seriously. Uh, I will be, uh, in the next two weeks, I'm going to study the history of the church a little bit more in depth. I'm going to see the values of the church when it first started, all the way up to where we're at now. And I want those values to be uh, known. So when I go in and talk with someone, Here's the church's values, and uh, hopefully come up with something, one or two, uh, that actually illustrate that in picture form without so sharing our uh, love for others, and uh, let them know the values and the historical, and so that we come up with something that actually means something and for the people, and I think that would be very beneficial. Uh, the rich heritage that this church was founded upon is very important. Through that beginning state of the first brick going down, now that was the foundation that led this church for many souls to be saved, for missionaries to be funded, uh, for preachers like myself, even before I came here to be funded at seminary through the cooperative program. Uh, this church has reached so many people, and I thought, what, what's, what's a better way to do a logo uh, than to go back to the history, to go back to some victories in the church, and put those values together and give it to them and let them brainstorm and come up with something before we get up there. So I think that would be very valuable. Of course, we would uh, bring that to your attention at a later business meeting day. Uh, but we are working towards that. We want everything to mean something, okay, at the end of the day. Not that John's logo doesn't mean anything, doesn't mean anything. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying at the end of the day, we'll let the church uh, have a voice in this. And I think that's the best way to do it. And, uh, and, and for the uh, purpose statement of helping others know Christ and live for Christ, uh, I do think that we could uh, shorten it uh, to the same value, uh, helping others know and live for Christ. If I did that in academic papers, it would sound a little too wordy. Of course, Christ is already in there. It's assumed that we're helping others love and know, uh, live for Christ. So. Uh, we could uh, definitely talk about that too in further detail, but I, I think that that is a great statement, and uh, we'll definitely keep that as is. Um, so if you got your Bibles, uh, look in Psalms 18. And uh, one other thing before I start, I forgot to mention because I did say there were two things. Uh, we'll have a business meeting next Sunday. Uh, there might be uh, uh, something brought up about the sanctuary renovation. Of course, we don't know how that's going to be brought up until we have a finance meeting on Sunday. But what I'm saying for those that are at home that want to vote, I'm trying to give you an early uh, way to just realize to come. You can sit in the back, uh, wear a mask, you can vote. Uh, we know that you give to the Sanctuary Renovation Fund. Uh, we know you give to the General Fund. Uh, so we want to invite all uh, that are members, active members, to come in and have a voice and vote. Uh, so I definitely want to uh, clarify that. There's nothing being hid from you. Uh, we do not videotape the uh, business meetings, uh, but we definitely invite you to come. You're definitely welcome. And if you need some place carved out for you, a little special, 
We'll make it work, okay? Just let us know at the church office. Psalms 18. Now, David here, of course, we're going to just go through verses 1 through 14 tonight. And it's a rather lengthy uh, psalm. And uh, just instead of just skipping around, it'd be rather good to just go through it. Uh, this is one of those uh, royalty psalms that David is uh, acknowledging God. And a good thing that David is going to do here in the text, after he gets through verse 3, he's going to go through 4 through 19, and he's going to share what? He's going to share his troubles along the road of following God. Uh, for anyone at home that does not think there is adversity in the Christian life, it would be false. Uh, you know, when you came, became a Christian, you might have thought when you first became a Christian uh, that uh, things are just not going to happen to you, bad circumstances are not going to, your friends will still accept you, well, you, you found out really quick, uh, that is not true, uh, but what I do tell you as a Christian, it is a better life and a road that should be traveled in the Christian life. Now a road less traveled would be one that is uh, a Christian out of fellowship with God going down a long road of sin. Let me tell you, there is no joy and no satisfaction in that. Uh, that would be like me coming from 85 South and taking a left on 20 East and going all the way towards California. It would take a long time. It would be a hard journey. But I'll tell you, when you contemplate sin and live for sin and not reckon yourself dead on the cross as Jesus pronounced the old man, on the cross is dead. And the new man, you have a new life. And David here is explaining God in his new life, in his new ways, working out things to deliver him over and over again. He is going to praise God for the victories. If you've had any spiritual victories in your life, it's because God was behind them all. If you had anything that seemed like a spiritual victory, but was not from God, then it wasn't really a spiritual victory. And in fact, when you define spiritual victories, you have to define it as God's hand completing the process of sanctification. How does God do that? How does God set us apart? Well, He brings tragedy or allows tragedy into our life. He allows circumstances that might not go our way, but they're according to God's Plan. You see, if you still react the same way to circumstances in anger than when you first became a Christian and you're still doing that 40 years down the road, God will continue to put you in circumstances until you deal with it. God wants to bring you into the conformity and to know Christ. The only way to do that a lot of times is to do it on a road that is bumpy, that is rocky, and has a lot of potholes in it. You know why? Because your dependence should not be upon your flesh, but should be upon God's Spirit. And if your flesh is dependent, if you're dependent upon your flesh, at the end of the day, what's going to happen to you? You are going to be used to what? Failure. Your flesh can only exist in its strength for a short time. But the Spirit of God continues to sustain you, to change you, David here is going to start off no other way. The way I like to start off in prayers, now there's been some prayers where I got to the meat and the nitty gritty. I just avoided everything got to the point. I'm right here, in general my prayers, I love you Lord, my strength. He's thankful for the Lord. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Boy, it's a good way to start. Is praising Him. He is His rock. He is His foundation. My God, my rock, in whom I take refuge. My shield and the horn of my salvation. Horn here is signifying His safety. God is His safety net. God is with Him. Uh, he doesn't go out on a cord, a lifted high in the air, without God's safety net below. Yes, we can uh, try to do God's will and try to walk in a certain way 
And there's times that you don't have it all written down. You've read through God's Word. You want to know the best thing to do next. And sometimes it's just stepping out in faith and seeing if God is in the situation. Now, there's many a times that God will shut a door because it was never meant to be open. Uh, there's many times that uh, doors will be open or seem to be open, but that could not also, that could not be God at all anyway. There's many a times that God has us come up to a door uh, that seems to be it has a crack. It's not shut all the way, but He wants to, you to trust Him in faith to go the race, to go the path. And a lot of times in our Christian life, and I can speak for myself, it is a time sometimes for us to test the the fight or flight mechanism. That means that when you come up into something that's testy, there's something that's hard, we want to, as time, we want to travel the path of least resistance. We want to travel a path that doesn't have any problems, that doesn't have any situations that we have to deal with. But you see, conflict is a good thing at times. You say, what do you mean, Pastor? Are you trying to tell us to stir up a lot of conflict? Or stir up a lot of conflict in our home? But no conflict can be an indicator of what God is putting His finger on in your heart to deal with. There's something in there that you need to give to the Lord. What do we see here? David, he says, He is my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, and I am saved from my enemies. You see, God is acknowledged here by David as one that, what, helps him escape, helps him get victories over his enemies. Uh, did he all, did he get victory over Saul? No, but God continued to provide a way out for him to escape. Many times David could have took Saul out of the picture. He could have took him out plenty of times, killed him, but did he? No, he did not. He trusted in the Lord. He was the anointed of God. And David was waiting on his turn. Listen, David was anointed. He was waiting to be king. But he wasn't going to take it by murdering somebody. You see, David was going to wait on the Lord and renew his strength. And how do you do that? You fly like eagles. You just soar and you trust in the Lord. So David here has acknowledged that God has delivered him many a time from his enemies, from escaping, and also from just pure victories of bloodshed. Uh, God has still been on top. David's going to transition here from verses 4 through 19 because he's going to talk about walking, as you would assume, through the valley of the shadow of death. Uh, he is going to talk about that because that is an indicator also that you're a Christian. You're going to go through hard times. You can't avoid them all. I know right now we're trying to avoid the virus. And boy, it seems, you know, we can stay at home. Uh, we can wear masks. We can wear gloves. And I encourage you to do those things. Uh, but at the end of the day, if you're supposed to get it, if you're going to get it, it's going to happen. And I cannot understand how it happens to some, where some gets the virus and some still lives in the household, doesn't get the virus. Some, both of them do, and, and children are dying, six-year-olds, 11-year-olds. Some have immunity that's really good. Uh, but at the end of the day, there's going to be hardships in the Christian life. I like to remind Christians that Jesus' own words were, in this world, you will have trouble. Jesus promised on this world you will have trouble, but Jesus also promised in heaven there will be no more trouble. There will be no more trouble up there. So we see here David says, The cords of death encompass me, and the torrents of ungodliness terrified me. The cords of Sheol surrounded me. The snares of death confronted me. Seemed like everywhere he turned, Every nation that he went into, every tribe, whatever the case may be, seemed like death was always knocking at the door. This is a good parallel because even though death was coming about him from enemies, from Saul, from other people, 
at the end of the day, he was walking in the midst of possibly dying, but trusting in the life giver. He was trusting in God. He was trusting in Yahweh. And even in the Old Testament, Jesus was with them. Jesus was with the Israelites. And as he was walking through this valley of death, at the end of the day, David is pleading his case with integrity and a consistent walk with the Lord. And he's not saying he's never sinned because that's impossible for any human to have or to convey in their life. But what he is saying at the end of the day is I walk through these areas of death and although they surround me, I know who holds my life in his hands. If God wants me to die, then he would allow it to happen. If God wants me to remain alive, victories will come upon my enemies. They will be put down because they're not just the Israelites' enemies. They're not just David's enemies. They are God's enemies. And anything getting in the way of God's plan will be annihilated will be taken care of. But at the end of the day, we got to remember this. That God sometimes brings stuff like a virus, like a circumstance, a family member, a drug problem in somebody's life, or whoever it may be, because there's a felt need. They're trying to get to the cross. And sometimes uh, the reality check is like it was for myself, uh, to just get things right with the Lord, is to recognize that my life is on a horrible path and I need the Lord Jesus Christ. And sometimes the circumstances God brings our way, the hurricanes God allows to come in, the 9-11s that He allows to happen, uh, the Holocaust and all the things that He allowed to happen, those were tragic events. But again, God used those things in history to form us where we are today. And see, David here has death surrounding him. But you see, these things that the enemies are bringing against him is making him more dependent upon the Lord, more dependent upon Yahweh, God. It's making him more dependent and stronger in his walk with God. You know why? Because we see verse 6 is an indicator. Look at this. In my distress, I called upon the Lord. Wait a minute, David. You have many army. You have a lot of army around you. You have a lot of people in the army. Uh, what, what are you scared of? You don't remember those past victories? David would tell us if he was here today, I believe. Listen, just because I had past victories and I depended on the Lord, that means I still need to depend on the Lord for the future victories. We cannot forget the Lord, and He is not forgetting the Lord because He calls out to the Lord no matter how big His army may be, no matter how sharp His spears may be, whatever it may be at the end of the day without God's blessing upon it, He will not have victory. He will not have victory at all. And so He cried to my God. He says, I cried to my God for help. He heard my voice out of his temple, and my cry for help before him came into his ears. The, ear, the earth shook and quaked, and the foundations of the mountains were trembling and were shaken because he was angry. Was he angry at David? No, not at all. He was angry at the enemies of David. Because in fact, like I told you once, and it's worth sharing again, uh, that these enemies are against the Lord. And what David is saying is I want deliverance and I want victory and the only path to get that is to seek God's help. And so he saw God's help. And God was angry. He said smoke went up out of his nostrils and fire from his mouth devoured. Coals were kindled by him. He bowed the heavens also and came down with thick darkness under his feet he rode upon a cherub and flew, and he sped upon the wings of the wind. He made darkness his hiding place, his canopy around him, darkness of waters, thick clouds of the skies. 
from the brightness before him past his thick clouds, hailstones, and coals of fire. The Lord also thundered in the heavens, and the Most High uttered his voice, hailstones and coals of fire. He sent out his arrows and scattered them in lightning flashes in abundance and routed them. Then the channels of the water appeared, and the foundations of the world were laid bare. At your rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of your breath of your nostrils. He said, Amen. He sent from on high. He took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy. No one, listen to this Christian, no one can separate you from the love of God. No one should be able to have victory over you because victory was already won on the cross of Calvary. When he said it was finished, it was a completed transaction that didn't need your effort, that didn't need your attitude, didn't need your personality, but you needed God to save you. And he put that old man to death. He gave you grace. He gave you a victory when he first saved you. And those that are discouraged in their Christian life, heed the words of David. God is going to win in your life if you trust Him. No matter what circumstance you're going through, no matter what, how you've fallen away from the Lord, or you seem to be backslidden in your life, at the end of the day, it was God that delivered you when He saved you. And God is continuing this process of sanctification to what? Deliver you. And He is doing that still today. God is with, with us. And he says here in verse 17, He delivered me from my strong enemy and from those who hated me, for they were too mighty for me. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my stay. He brought me forth also into the broad place. He rescued me because He delighted in me. Sometimes, if we're not careful, we could skip over scriptures and not realize that God delights in you. You say, no, He does not. He might not delight in your actions always, but there is nothing that will separate Him from loving you, from delighting in you. He saved you and called you for a purpose. No matter what that purpose is, you're important. You were saved by God. You're going to be used by God. You need to trust in Him and step out on faith to believe it. You have to believe that God has the best interest in His heart, in His mind for you. And when we do not trust that, we will walk away. But listen, there's plenty of times David could have walked away, could he not? There's many times Saul wanted to kill him. Other enemies wanted to kill him. Many times he hid, hid in caves, hid behind rocks until Jonathan came to tell him, Ever, you know, you need to go or uh, you need to stay, you know. Uh, so there's been many times David hid, but his hiding was not a spiritual reference. His hiding was a physical because God was preparing him to be a king for the nation of Israel, for the Israelites. So his physical hiding was never a reference to his spiritual hiding. He continued to trust the Lord no matter what the circumstance brought. And if you read through Psalms 18 at the beginning all the way to 19, you're going to see right now that he had a rocky, bumpy road that had potholes all in it, speed bumps every 10 seconds. I mean, it was, it was bad at times. But you know what? At the end of the day, he continued to trust the Lord because the circumstances, the enemies, they are not... The, the, the people, the circumstances are not the things that we keep our eyes upon. It's on the Lord. And we're going to see as we start next week, as we uh, read in verse 20, just look at this. Even though all that happened around him, there was a lot of victories. And in verse 20 it says, The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands. He has recompensed me. So Jesus, God, Yahweh, 
the Holy Spirit was with David through all this. And this wasn't just a victory for David. This was a victory that helped us get where we're at today. To the Israelites traveling through the land. To the gospel spreading all the way up to that land. He said, what are you talking about the gospel in the Old Testament? If you believe that God only loved Gentiles in the New Testament, you haven't read your Bible really good. Uh, God cared about humanity in general. Uh, God cared about everyone that's made into His image. Uh, for a black person, for a white person, for an Hispanic, whatever the nationality, uh, God says that all lives matter. And they're created in His image. They are image bearers of God. So when you look at David, so, well, I don't have the victories that David had. I don't have all these victories over these enemies or, or nations or tribes or people that he defeated with the Lord's help. My friends, you have the same God that was with David. And you need to continue to depend on him for your future and present victories because God is not finished with you. And I'll wrap it up with this scripture. Philippians 1, 6 says, He who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Jesus is not done with you. He's not done with me. If you have more oxygen to breathe, God has a plan for you. Just trust in Him like David did. Let's go to the Lord. Heavenly Father, You are gracious. You are great. God, there's nothing too big for you. Nothing's impossible with you, God. I pray for the believers here. I pray for forming Memorial Baptist Church. I pray for those that are online. God, I pray your mighty hands continue to be upon them because I know, God, you love us and you are not finished with us. You have a plan. You have a purpose. And even as the first brick laid here at for memorial. Lord, it was for a purpose. For lost people. To encourage the members. To encourage visitors. For missions. For the whole world, God, you are using this church to reach. Thank you, God, for being faithful here. Let us be reminded through many victories through the church and our, and our own individual life that, Lord, you are not done yet. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.